So welcome everybody, welcome to Atsal podcast. The theme for tonight is non-resistance and today is September the 19th, 2024. Non-resistance. Um, so what, what occurred to me is I, I'm going to try to hmm, share experiences rather than, you know, try to teach any method because there are so many methods. However, um, there are actually some underlying things that are really, they're not methods. They are um, how you process things, how you live life. That actually is the, is the base for all the other methods. There's, there's a method for opening your third eye. There's a method for you know, processing emotions. Like, like there are so many different methods. You know, for example, processing emotions. You know, there is <clears throat> um, rebirthing in the child work. Then there's ho'oponopono. Like, you know, there, there are at least, you know, I don't know, 10,000 different methods of processing um, emotions. And um, however, the underlying is, is there's actually, there are only a few things that's underlying. And um, I, like I can go through all 10,000 different um, methods. However, they are, a method is simply something that a person has experienced, has um and it worked for them. So they they repeat it enough and they might even have um, taught somebody else and find that it helps them. So they found a method. But um, something works, not because it's a, it's a good method or a bad method. Something works because um, it hits a resonance with um, something that is very basic. So I actually want to talk about basics, go back to basics, because if you, when you know the basics, then um, you don't need any of the, any of the methods, because you can create or your own, find your own that is uniquely yours. So um, that's, that's kind of more what I would like to talk about from, from now on, um, rather than teaching a method. <clears throat> I, hopefully I, I would, you know, get, get into more of that because <clears throat> I don't want to teach anything that I haven't quite um, experienced it and really felt it myself. So depending on how, how many, how much time I have to experience different things, I may or may not have anything to share sometimes. So, but recently, because I don't know, because of all the energies that's really wrapping up, so I I find that it's, it's like so many shifts, so many shifts. It used to be if I have one shift, you know, in a couple of months or maybe sometimes even half a year or one year, it would be great. But now it's like. Every couple of weeks, there's a shift. I, 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 I can feel the big shift within myself. So I know that the energy is actually very supportive of these kind of shifts. So the latest shifts um, <clears throat> that really came to mind is, for lack of a better word, non-resistant. Non-resistance. Um, how did I come across that? I remember a while ago, maybe earlier in the year, um, I asked you guys, you know, what do you want me to talk about? Like, I asked you all to give me some podcast topics. So, so every now and then I would look at that list again, this list again, because I wrote down maybe about 10 or 12, um, a dozen of them. I would look down the list and see which one kind of resonate and, and use that. So self-sabotage, I've talked about. 
um, those things. But when I looked at those, um, it's like, okay, how to keep balance? How to deal with people being sick and dying and um, healing at all levels, healing the inner child, um, how to deal with blood sugar, chakra clearing and all that. You know, they, they actually have a common theme. The common theme is really resistance. And um, so, so that's why I want to talk about non-resistance because whatever it is that we, we resist, persists. And I, I actually find that very true I, by experience, through experiences is whatever it is that, that I resist, um, I may be able to move ahead um, spiritually, emotionally, intelligently with the resistance, you know. However, when when I don't resist, that's when I feel I make the most progress. Um, so what is non-resistance? Non-resistance is It's really what the whole process, process of life is about. It's non-resistance because things happen in life. Things happen, you, we get born, um, we have parents, some good, some bad. It can be good one time and bad another time. Um, friends, some good, some bad. Experiences, some good, some bad. Relationships, careers all of those. There are some good and some bad. Um, however, they are all just experiences. It is when we resist them, that's when it um, make a pattern, that it creates a resistance pattern. So energetically speaking, if something happens, and you just experience it fully with no judgment. Um, I wouldn't say no emotions, just obviously you will experience the emotion. But if you do not resist it, if you do not try to resist going through that process of, you know, getting hurt, being a victim, and then grieving and then healing your own um, emotionally, yourself emotionally, and, and your physical body, if you don't resist that, if you don't try to hang on to things, hang on to anger, or hang on to bitterness, or hang on to betrayal, if you don't try to, to do that, it, you actually move through it. You, you'll be able to move through it naturally you don't even have to do anything about it the thing is when it is natural it takes time and um for example morning 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 somebody um, leaving you or morning somebody dying it takes time uh, you can't just you know sleep at one night or two nights or even i don't know uh, a, a year or two and require that it's done you're done morning and require yourself to get over it so that usually that's what happened that's part of the resistance is we have this idea that you know you can only mourn for 30 days you can only mourn for 90 days or you can only mourn for one year three years 10 years like whatever the limit is the mind likes to think that there is a limit. I know that usually um, what, mourning somebody's death is, I don't know how many, I forgot, a year or two years, like there's that mourning period. But that's only a, that's only what the mind has it as. It's only the, the, the custom, maybe, you know, you can only mourn for 360 days, for example. Some people, uh, 
of that custom. So that you know, you more you 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 wear black dark clothes, or you um, put some uh, white flower in, in, on your head, or uh, as a as a hair thin, or those kind of uh, things. So you only wear it for a year, or for I don't know how many number of days, and then you don't have to wear it anymore. But those are just customs. But our emotions, our experience, does not conform to any of those. When we start to, when we start to um, give a limit to ourselves to process these emotions of um, mourning, whether someone's passed away or the relationship is over, when we give ourselves that limitation it actually is a form of resistance it actually elongates and prolong that period of time so there is so much there is so much resistance it's like um i remember the longest time i was having trouble i was having problem with my with my mother because i have it that my mother has to be this way that's what would make me happy so I have it that, you know, there's that um, image of what I expect a mother to be. And I was trying to fit my mom into it. So that's, that's definitely resistance. And I think it's because my mom did not fit that mold. And of course, um, the reverse is, is true as well. I did not fit my mom's role. Um, my, I did not fit my mom's um box that she thinks um, a daughter should be so we were like we're locked in this so so much resistance and that's why it actually created um, a much worse mess than it needs to be and and a lot of times that is really what happens is that we have an, um, an image in our mind of what a relationship um, a career and experience is supposed to be, it should be, because the ideal is that if I have that, it's great. It's like if I have that perfect wedding or perfect <clears throat> birthday party or perfect whatever it is, then it's good. Otherwise, then it's a tragedy. So that actually makes life more more of a terrible experience than it needs to be. If we actually, you know, whatever it is, if I actually have um, accepted my mom for who she really is and not compare it to who I really want her to be, if I hadn't done that, our relationship would have been resolved a lot sooner. I mean, it is resolved now, but it was, for a while, it was like, why did you do that, you know? And then she was you know, <clears throat> getting back at me with the same questions. Why did my daughter not behave that way? It finally got to the, the, the point where I really understood what non-resistance is. Like, don't try to fit, um, don't try to resist what my mother is or, so, or supposed to be by comparing what what I want her to be versus what she actually is, but actually accept her completely, non-resistance. I do not try to resist. And you know, every time when my mom um, triggers me, it was like I I think at first it, it takes me um maybe a <clears throat> A week or two to get over it. Now it's like I don't even get triggered anymore. So it's um really when I don't come clear, when I don't try to fit a square path into a round hole. Did you guys hear that? That was just a lot of uh, interference down in the streets going by. 
So anyways, so non-resistance. Um, the reason why I want to bring that up is actually life itself is the the is the best teacher. Is the best teacher. It is whatever it is that happens. We actually um, scripted it before we come here. We don't script every second and every minute of it, but we script the we, we script the the major events. For example, we script the parents, what we're supposed to experience um, with father's side, mother's side, or if we have siblings, then with our siblings, each of the siblings. So we kind of scripted that already before we come here, the major events. Um, and um, if, you have, if you have any other major relationships, those would be scripted in as well. So usually those, the major events are all scripted. And it is just that once we got here, once we're here in person and living through those events that we have scripted for ourselves at a, at a different level, we didn't like it because why? Because we, a lot, a lot of things. It's not that you know, there's something wrong that, you know, we did it wrong. No, we didn't do it wrong. The, the part of it is because we, at the, the, the 3D level, we, we have a big box that we're supposed to fit in. Each culture has its own box that wants us to fit in that. And of course, we have infinite beings. Fitting into a box is not always um, an easy thing to do. So all that resistance. And um, but still, nothing is wrong. No nothing is wrong at all. It's all supposed to be like that. We are supposed to have things that didn't work out the first time. And that's why we would come back the next time. Maybe in the same lifetime, maybe in different lifetimes. To do a redo. Um, not an exact redo, because it's never exactly the same. Maybe the first time you experience a, some something, like maybe the first time... Um, my relationship with my mom first time I don't really I don't really know what when when that was I mean lifetimes ago I have no idea my relationship with my mom um maybe the first time though I was the mom and she was the daughter and so we set up a a um, kind of a dynamic and then the next time we do it the roles would be reversed. And then the next time, it may not be a, a mother and child relationship, maybe husband and wife, or it could be siblings. So that's how we do it. We play different roles, um, but all um, kind of looking at the same dynamic, the dynamic that we've that I've set up with my mom with our first encounter, first lifetime um, encounter each other. Who knows when that was? It could have been a thousand lifetimes ago. It could have been, you know, yesterday. No, nobody knows. But we set up a dynamic, and the dynamic um, created an energetic pattern within our within our akashic record. And each time we come. Um, we have a physical body and then the, the the energetic body, which has the Akashic record as well, would hold that pattern. It, it will remember that pattern. And then we get to have a slightly different view of that dynamic. And then the next time, and then another lifetime we would have yet another slightly different view of this kind of the same dynamic so that's how life is set up or I should say that's how lifetimes are set up that we get to look at a dynamic and um, relationship dynamic and event dynamic 
and we get to look at it from as many angles as you care to look at that dynamic until we get to the point where we've looked through all 360 degrees of, of how many ways you want to look at the same dynamic and we can we can actually even repeat very similar um, viewpoint as well if we didn't get it the first time. So it could be, we could be looping and looping, trying to get at the same dynamic for a hundred lifetimes, maybe sometimes less, sometimes more. And that is really the progress of, um, that's how we actually resolve anything energetically is to just look at something from very different angle. And um, sometimes it is easy to look at it during the same lifetime. And sometimes it's not easy. It depends on how, I would say, traumatic the, the dynamic may be or how, how um, strong the, the trigger. Yes, so that's the system that's set up. And then when we get to um, and when we get to here in modern days, we, we have the idea that we can we're supposed to solve everything in this lifetime. This is the last lifetime we need to solve it all this lifetime. So it does not get that way. It, it does not matter whether we are in third dimension, fifth dimension, or however the dimension. My understanding is that a dynamic um, is set up and it's very different. It may be very different depending on which dimension you're in. So we may be getting at something very um, a particular energy pattern and energy dynamic at 3D level. So at the physical level, we, we get one thing. It could be, you know, a stomachache. It could be back pain. But at a different level, the back pain actually has a story behind it. And we won't be able to resolve it until we move away from the physical and actually look at the um, emotional or look at the energetic and look at all the, the past and present dynamic of that, of that um, pattern is. So that's how we how we actually move. What I'm trying to say is the resistance we have is it's really our mind, our mind telling us that, okay, we, it's supposed to be one way. And if it does, if it's not that way, then there's something wrong. We have to do work on it. Yes, if you want to, you may want to do some work on it. However, um, even if you don't do any work on it, work is being done because your if it's something that is yours to unravel your soul would put it in front of you in your face um for as many times and as long as it needs to completely unravel it and are there methods that can help with that I'm pretty sure there is. Um, however, I am not sure how permanent or efficient that method is because there's so many layers, so many layers, so many levels within a the dynamic of the pattern that we can only really get at a limited fraction 
of that dynamic. There's something that we don't understand. Um, so I know it's, I'm not sure where I have explained that. Any, I'm asking for questions, comments. You guys know what I'm talking about? No, I can I can talk about it. I I know what you, what you exactly saying because I question so many times because especially when I get the uh, uh, when I see my siblings like my sister why she acted that way why like then I say I must have uh, agreed or I must have done I always say that must have done in my past life same thing what she's doing to me now. Or my son, he's not listening to me. I must have done the same thing, like he's not listening to me. So I just ease my mind that way. So I, most of the time I let it go. Mm -hmm. I can just give you one example of how I learned about non-resistance. Kind of, some, you know, without really giving it too much thought, but based on experience. Like one week, there is 10 days construction in front of my house and I can't park on a driveway. And I said, oh my God, I'm going to get 10 tickets because they always give tickets at night. And I said, okay, what happens, happens. I've got none, <laughs> like no tickets. I just had no resistance towards construction. It wasn't too much noise. I got no tickets just because I had different attitude. Before construction is happening in the neighborhood, I said, oh my God, so much noise. And sure enough, there is so much noise. Mm -hmm. I have other experiences, but this is just the recent, just, just last week. That's a, yeah, that's a good one. Thank you for bringing that topic. It does work. Okay. Thank you for sharing. That's great. So I, I wanted to share that um, another word for non-resistance is acceptance and be with, you know, don't, don't fight it, go with the flow. Um, so we know that that's much better, works much better for us, but we come to this world with a limited mind. And we're trying to solve a problem. Like you said, there's so many layers and levels. We try to solve that with our limited mind. And we get so frustrated and we want to change things. Uh, we don't know any better. So <laughs> that that's why. Um, but maybe it was set up that way, right? I mean, if everybody accepted everything and each other, then there wouldn't be a problem, right? Um. It would be a different kind of problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I was making notes as you were talking. I was like, we all know this, but why do we? And, and I, I think I wrote one thing. There was one reason we, we resisted it is because we don't know why or how we created it. And because of that, we are like, no, I don't like it this way. It has to be this other way. So, mm -hmm. like with relationship with your mother, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. We don't know when it was created, how it was created, why it was created. I mean, there's so many layers and levels to it. So, and of course you want to have a good relationship with your mother, but uh, sometimes it seems like, <laughs> I mean, it works sometimes, but sometimes you feel like, oh, this is never going to change, but that, that's not true either. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I say that sometimes. I say, I tell my son, I say, you never change. You say, yes, mom, yes, mom, yes, mom, you never change. So <laughs> I think I'm even talking about. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can, I can definitely. Uh understand yeah when you when you are the mom <laughs> i know because yeah, i just expectations. Like, you know what i i i do analyze that do i expect anything from him no 
what why i'm frustrated when let him live but then i say this is not how he's supposed to live at least get up and clean your room that's what i'm asking that's where we have a biggest fight he says i'll leave my room alone i say why you have to keep it clean i say the energy doesn't move properly you do this you do that <laughs> Oh yeah, I still remember. I still remember you trying to redo his um, the ceiling. Yes. <laughs> oh gosh. <clears throat> I know. Yep. You. That's how the dynamic is, and I can totally understand because I have a son too. Mm -hmm. Um, but my. I'm not trying to get my son to clean his room because we don't even live in the same house. That's better. That's what I'm telling him to move out, but he doesn't move out. <laughs> but the the thing is, um, it's a we think that it is about the room, but it's actually not about the room. Okay. It has nothing to do with the room. The room is just um, on the surface level. There's something underneath that, actually. And so that, what I am um, carrying then underneath that? <laughs> don't ask me. I don't know. <laughs> it's your pattern. It's not my pattern because I, I like my me and my son. We have a different pattern. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and um. But the, the same principle ap applies is we think it is one thing. We think we, we fight over something, but it's because of non -res because resistance. You're resisting him being the way he is. Or the other thing is you, you're not accepting for how he is. So that's, and that, non-acceptance and it turns up as something that is physical that you can actually point at but it's actually energetic can we change the coding of the energetic stuff coding of the energetic stuff okay yes and no you can shift it energetically. You can shift it. But once you shift it, a pattern is not something that is dead. It's not something that is, that is fixed. If you change something, it will have to reconfigure it again. Mm -hmm. And then when it's totally reconfigured, it may improve or, or feels a little different. But it may not, it may still be something there because there are so many ways that a pattern can be so yes you can change it but even after you change it it may not be what you want it to be so mm -hmm. when you change something energetic energetically you change it and then you have to wait and see how it reconfigured and then you can shift it again if if it's still not to your liking so how so, long it takes how long i i don't want to wait like 20 years more so then yeah, how many okay. lifetimes do you have huh? <laughs> <laughs> you have to understand one thing um you can't change him you can only change yourself Oh, I tried when so you, many when times. When you change a pattern, you, you, you can't change someone else's pattern because you don't have access to someone else's pattern. Mm -hmm. You can change how you respond to them. So in that way, you shift. So it's... Um, do you still want to shift? Yeah, I would love to shift because I, I don't like that. That's the only thing. And I do question myself. I say, why do I do that? He's not going to listen. So why I am getting 
so antsy about things. So I have to change. And believe me, I have changed a lot from being OCD to now I live like, uh, I don't know, on a railway station, literally. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. I wonder like how much else, how, what else I can do? I was literally OCD before, like I, everything has to be a particular way. Now, no. Good. It's already shifted some, somewhat. Somewhat, yes. But uh, <laughs> the last thing, I don't know how I can, because it does bother me. Like if it's messy, it's not dirty. My, my house is not dirty, but it's messy. <laughs> Yep, I, I yeah, I, I I can totally get that. Yeah, yeah. You like your your place um tidy. Something yes, is, nothing's wrong with that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Well, what I was gonna say is that the more, and even with yourself, the more you try to change somebody else, the more they're gonna resist. Because maybe at some level they say you're not accepting me as who I am. No, because uh, for a couple of weeks, uh, maybe three, four weeks, I didn't say anything to him. And then one day I said, Richie, I think you should have done that. The first thing he said, he started crying. I said, what happened to you? He said, you know, I'm noticing last three, four weeks, you're not saying anything to me. It bugs me a lot. I said, why, why it bugs you a lot? You should be in a peace. Your mom doesn't... No, it seems like even my mom, mother doesn't care about me anymore. Isn't said, that interesting? Yeah. That's how he gets <laughs> love and attention from you. Yeah. I said, what, wow. what logic is that? <laughs> no, that's how he feels. He, That's how he gets attention and from you. Wow. Yeah, that is funny. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's how he gets your love is to get you to... Um, <clears throat> yeah I said I yell scream at you and that is not love okay <laughs> <laughs> yep um, oh Jesus <laughs> I know I know that's uh yeah that's uh that's interesting because that. it hurts me more when you don't say anything I know that I am wrong but when you don't say anything to me that hurts me more because oh, no. maybe he was damaged when he was little he was ignored and that's too painful for him oh no no no! he was never ignored he was the, the everybody like maybe for i don't know i wasn't there but you know yeah. it may not be you it may be somebody else that did that to him that really made him sensitive oh you know i if i if i behave badly i get attention if i'm good <laughs> no, no, no. He, when he was growing up, he was very good. Not he, but very, very good. Even now, he's a gem, but uh, there are a few things I do. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's he's good kid. That that way, I don't have any issue. But just only our issue is the, the, the messy stuff. So, mm. And he's not scheduled. I, I, then I said, you know what? I don't care you schedule yourself or not. It's your life. But <laughs> you're here, you have to keep it clean. Okay. <laughs> oh, that is. <clears throat> I, I know. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay. Any other comments? No, we, we like to change. I like to change the, the, the shift, actually, the energetically. If if I can, faster way, that'll be nice. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. for myself. Well, I don't care what he does, just myself. Okay. Um, um, after, I, what my plan is to do another um, soul clearing after this. Mm -hmm. So that clearing would uh, hopefully, so 
when we do that clearing, you can specifically target the, the lifetimes that you have had with your son. Clean up the old stuff first, and that may shift the, the current pattern. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, almost welcome. Let me see. What did I miss anything uh, in terms of what I want to say? Oh, oh, okay. So emotions. I actually specifically want to talk about emotions. So emotions. Um. So how to re dissolve um, resistance is so that the dynamics of an experience is, you know, first is the experience itself and then emotions associated with the experience and then the judgment, which is really the, the story that you make up in your mind. So you experience something, you feel certain emotions, and then you make up a story that, oh, that's because, you know, she does not care about me, or he does not care about me, or he, that's a betrayal. So so it, it has the, actually what happened, which is the experience, and then the emotional part of it. Actually, the emotional part is really um, makes it more vivid for your body. And so then you, you actually feel all of the experience much, much stronger with emotions. And then the, the judgment, which is really the stories that you have in your mind, that you create a story when you have a, some experience. Um, my, my understanding or my own experience is that I make up a story that makes sense to me, that helps me to kind of um, understand the experience. So three components to it. The, what I want to say about the first component is the experience. It's actually the most important part. The experience is, is so um, non-resistant is actually when you're actually going through the experience is to just surrender to the experience. Let's say if you're having a bad day, just surrender to it. Don't try to compare it to okay, yesterday. It was, it was not the same. So how come it's not the same? All that. So don't do that. Or I should say refrain from doing that. That's part of the um, um, trying to dissolve the resistance is to just do the best you can to embrace the experience. And then for the emotions part is the same thing, is to feel all the emotions because emotions, usually what the emotions does is it enhances the experience. Meaning that if it's a good experience, you actually would feel more, like you feel it all over in your body. If it's a bad experience, same thing. It actually accentuates the, the um, experience for you. And then the, the story part, the judgment part is to just, we are, we are judgment um, creating we like we like stories. We actually we love stories. We love creating stories in our mind, and that actually is um, resistance. It's actually a form of resistance. This experience is something that we experience with our body, and like when we experience it with our body, we don't try to create a story with that experience then once this experience is done it's gone it's totally gone even emotional part is when you fully experienced it then there's there's no more um there is no more substance of that emotion then the emotions will not be 
overwhelming anymore. No matter when, whether it is good experience, good emotions, or horrible emotion, once you felt it thoroughly without trying to escape or trying to think of something else, then um, like the emotions resolve itself. You don't need to do anything. The only thing is the, the story, because the story actually, um, the story actually has the emotions in it. So as long as you keep the, the story running in your head, you're actually keeping the emotions in. So, so this, I experienced this and you create the story. So the story actually keeps the emotions in and, and, when you have the story keeping the emotions in, it actually affects the body. So your body will store that template. So every time you have that story, the emotions would run that way too. So if so when you don't try to judge something, when you don't create a story in your mind of what your experience is, meaning that you don't go through life in your head. You go through life in your heart and in your body. It's a much easier process. Um, or I should say it's easier to dissolve the resistance. It's easier to let the experience just again move through you. So that's what I what I find for emotions as well. But the thing is, um, especially heavy emotions, heavy emotions, it takes time. So don't think that, oh, okay, I'm sad. Like I'm really, really, really sad. Don't think that, you know, it, you can only be so, so sad for 10 minutes and that's normal. If it's more than 10 minutes, then it's not normal and if you have to do something about it, take a pill or whatever, or go, go see a psychiatrist or do whatever it is that you do um, when, you, when you feel sad, this sad for you know, more than 10 minutes. I'm just giving an example. So when you don't do that, when you, when you don't um, make an emotion wrong, it actually, it will work itself out. It will take as long as it needs to. And your body will know. It depends on the body. Some bodies, things will just move through easily. They feel it really deeply and then it's gone when it's done. So I think that's, um, for me, I think that's something that's really important to to know about dissolving resistance is um, no stories, don't create stories. Or if you enjoy creating stories, then create really funny stories. Because when you create a story that is funny, you can laugh at yourself. If you can laugh at yourself, um, at least you can have fun with your stories. And emotions and experience, yeah, just embrace it all. Questions, comments about that? I have a question and comment. Um, what if, um, you know, you were trained as a child that emotions are not safe, you don't feel emotions, something happens you immediately go to your mind. We, I would say most people yeah. are trained that way. Yeah. So you maybe- remind, You remind yourself. So. Yeah, I know. So maybe you need to retrain yourself to say that, no, I'm not gonna go to my mind. I'm gonna feel in my heart what's happening. Yeah. 
I can totally relate to this section of your uh, presentation, unbelievable. Uh, like muscle pain, let's say somewhere. And I said, oh, I had that year ago. Oh, that was so bad. Oh, I suffered for two weeks. Oh, I don't want this again. And I, I never put those things together. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep, we have a story about it. So the story gets attached and experience prolongs yep. just because you attach that story to it. Thank you so much. Okay, yep, you're welcome. I like when I have a um, a pain, I would imagine all sorts of things. Oh, that's that's where my kidney is. I must have, you know, kidney stone. I can imagine a lot. <laughs> so I will have the story in my mind, making up the story to try to make sense of why I have this pain in, in this part of my body. And then, you know, it's just a story I made up. But if I actually believe in the story, then the pain has a very good reason to keep hanging on. Wow. Wow. So um, I know we are, we've been all trained to create stories. Watch your stories. It's, um, yeah, if, when you catch yourself repeating a story or even creating one, then just know that, yeah, it's a story. Who knows what um, is the truth? And if you really want to create a story, be really skillful. Create stories that helps. Create story that at the very least makes you smile. So how do we do this? Uh, instead of attaching the story from experience to, to this ex present experience, whatever. How I, I'm, I'm not sure I got your steps, how to get rid of it. Like what is the best way to detach the story from the experience, from the emotion experience? Um, so the story, a story. So when you, so usually the story is every time you, like, you feel an emotion, there's a story. Or if you feel a pain, there's you know, a story will come up then you know that that's a story. And um, you know it's a story if the same story always come up. Then yeah, that's definitely a story that you've created to explain to yourself you know, why you have this pain or that experience. I guess just being aware that that is happening yep. will help just, to, to just, detect aware yeah. just mm -hmm. being aware first that's, that's the, the first step because if you're not aware then there's nothing you can do so just be aware and like if something really bothers you then just be aware of the, what stories are you telling yourself when you get triggered what is the story you're telling yourself and then once wow. you that's kind so of know funny. what the story is then you can start to Tinker with the story, play with the story. So um, what do I mean by that? Just want to give an example. Mm. Okay. Um, you remember, I don't know if you've all um, seen Harry Potter. Okay, I have to find that clip sometime as, um, so one of the ways that they can, so there, there was one episode where there is a, a particular, I would say, not a monster, but a particular um, creature that their ability is to turn into something that you they can turn into the shape of the thing that you feared most. Let's say if I'm afraid of my mother, 
So when I go see that uh, creature, that creature would turn into my mother. So it would turn into my, my worst fear. So then the exercise for um, dispelling the that is to think of my mother wearing um, a really ridiculous outfit, like maybe wearing a, a baby outfit, which is something that is so out of the ordinary that it actually makes me laugh, make me smile, rather than feeling the fear. So that's one way of starting to um, shift the pattern or shift the story. This is genius. Thank you, Vinny. Okay. So Very because when you know the story, then you can change the story. If you don't know, then the story will just keep on running on automatic. Once you have um, kind of observed and got what the story is, you can start to play with the story, making it to the most ridiculously extreme <clears throat> one way or another. When you do that in your mind, it actually starts to um, shift that pattern automatically. So that's one way of working with a pattern with a story. Any other questions? Well, I was going to say that a lot of stories come from our past. <clears throat> so because it's something like we've experienced before, so it, um, I guess we just have to think of a new story when something happens instead of saying, oh, this is what happened in the past. That's why I'm having this. So, yeah. And the other question is, is, is meaning the same as story? We give meaning thing? Yep. Thing. Yep. There, yeah, it's a story. Yeah. But uh, like I said, a lot of those things come from our past, come from our programming. OK. So yes, it's passed down to you. But you, because when once it's passed down to you, you own it. You can change it. Right. Yeah. If you don't own it, you can't change it. You can, okay. <gasps> so you can't you can't change how your parents, um, what your parents' story is. But if it's your story, once you have you know, taken it on, you can change it. So that is so powerful. You're saying own it instead of rejecting it, because if you yeah. reject it, if it's yours, you can shift it. If it's not mm. yours, nothing you can do. Wow. Yeah. And you can be as creative as you wish to change oh, yeah. the story. Oh, yeah. Right. As, as creative. As that was cool. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that was very cool. Okay, so anything, any other comments? Um, okay, let me see. Yep, I think I've covered everything that I wanted to cover. If there are no more questions or comments, then we can go to meditation. No? Okay. Let's, let's meditate then. I'm just going to mute everybody. Okay.